Hello, everybody. Gary Braun and Mike Braun here again with Pivotal Advisors, uh, our next episode of our Real Talk series. And today we're going to be talking about chasing new customers. Uh, it's still part of our job. We still need to go out and find new customers. And we've been finding that a lot of companies are struggling in this area right now. Um, people are saying, I'm not in a buying mode. Uh, I'm not interested. Get back to me in a couple of months. So Mike, what are you here? Yeah, I think it's the same thing, Gary. I've, I've talked to several leaders and they're saying, well, you know, uh, there's a lot changing out there and our people are calling, but you know, we can't get a hold of them. We, we're, they're, they're just not interested or because of the situation they're in, they're in a wait and see mode. Everybody's in that world of wait and see mode. And I said, okay, so what direction are you giving to your people? And they went, well, I'm just asking them to work harder. And right. so I thought that was a very interesting question. So we wanted to dig into that a little bit and say, well, what should we be doing or what can we be doing? So the first thing I think here is to get into what has changed out there, right? We're going about things our old way, right? This is how we've always done it. And maybe we're doing it on Zoom meetings, but we are going about it our own way. And so when we, we sat down and thought about it, we said, well, what has changed? And you know, one of the first things that may have changed is who's our target customer or what we would call our ideal client, right? So, you know, say a little bit about that. How have those changed? Well, obviously there's some, some industries that are way, way down. If you're calling on the restaurant or bar industry or entertainment industry, you're right. They're not buying. Right. Um, but there are a lot of other industries that are up. Grocery is way up. Everybody's been going to the grocery store. Um, IT, anybody supporting mobile stuff is way up. Medical is way up. There are anything in construction that is bigger construction really hasn't changed that much. A lot of manufacturing hasn't changed that much. So just picking who we should go chase, let's look at our markets and which ones are doing okay and which ones aren't and change direction for our team as to which, which client base should we focus on? And then even within those clients, Mike, a lot of the needs of those clients have changed as well. Absolutely. So one decision is who else can we chase that is more active instead of just waiting for the people that we have. So then, and then within those, um, you know, their needs or their priorities have changed, right? I went mm -hmm. from I'm attacking to maybe I'm backing off or maybe I'm switching which customer I'm buying on, which makes a product or service more viable or less viable, or maybe I'm just conserving cash right now. Right. I'm just not going to spend on anything. But there, there's, we've talked to other people who said, holy cow, we're hot right now. We're doubling down. We're trying to hire as fast as we can. We just have to find different people that have priorities that match in the next period of time. And I think too often we get this passive approach of, well, I left him a message. I gave him a call. I sent an email. They're just not interested right now. So there's nothing I can do. With I, that customer, maybe that's accurate. I just heard customer, one uh, leader at one of the organizations that we were talking to said, we had our three-year roadmap of stuff that we're going to work on. Right. It is completely out the window, and stuff we were going to be working on in 2021 and 2022 is what we're working on now. Their priorities have completely changed. And in their case, they're moving more towards, we got to do a lot of more e-commerce stuff. But all the stuff that was important to them is, off and all the stuff that was future is now there. So again, priorities and needs have changed tremendously. And they had a lot of urgency around that. You know, the things that they needed to get done, they needed to get done now. Boy, if you were a salesperson in that market that could help them in that area, that that would be perfect for you right now. Uh, especially if you can do it with some speed. You know, I, I, I look at the whole you know, world right now and there's how much energy is going into finding a treatment or finding a vaccine for this, for this COVID you know, uh, uh, disease and things are happening really fast. What are we doing in our companies to make them fast, right? And, 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 and who cares about that? So the other thing we're seeing right now is who the decision maker is changing. I had one group I was working with who said, hey, we're calling them. They're all furloughed. They're not there. They said, mm -hmm. well, did the company shut down to zero? No. So somebody's deciding things. How mm -hmm. do we get to a different level of decision maker, right? How do we get past our normal contacts or our normal people and find out who is in charge if they're on short staff? The other one I heard quite a bit is, well, they're not in the office because everyone's working from home. What we have learned is 
they're as more available than they have ever been at home, but that's not the same phone number, right? So right. how do you find out and get a cell phone number or how, how do you work through and get to a different spot? How do you reach them uh, through some other means through LinkedIn or some other way? Because I think they do have time, but they're not sitting at their office desk or the call we, we, we would normally make. So you really got to try all your different um, things to get in. Um, and then, you know, they may even be interested, but they might not be in the right spot to make a decision or make a buying spot right now. So what can we do there? And, and if I summarize all this stuff, so some clients are buying, some aren't, their decision making is different, their needs have changed, everything else. And if we're just calling with our business as usual approach, we're tone deaf to that. I, mean, I almost, even if we are down the line with somebody or they're a current customer, we almost got to treat it as brand new. We, we need to do rediscovery again. We need to change our messaging. We need to change how we're helping whatever there are. We anticipate those needs are going to be, but we can't go in with the same thing. Absolutely agree with that, right? It's a, it's a whole new ball game. So as a sales leader, then what is our responsibility to direct the team or set new expectations, right? And in one case, we had people do exactly what you just said, Gary. Your job is to call every one of these customers and prospects, because you know, we have prospects, and get the lay of the land. Like, let, let's go capture yeah. these five pieces of information about what's changed in their business, what's coming to the top of the priority list, what do they have to get done, what's the urgency, and, and who's in charge today, right? However mm -hmm. you ask that question, because that will tell me if I've got something to offer in that company in the time frames that we're talking about here. Um, but don't sit idle, go find it because their world has changed. Um, other, I think other decisions are uh, in the messaging part of that, right? Mm -hmm. So as I attack them, am I using the same, hey, this is Mike and you know, we've got this product, let me know if you're interested. I bet I personally got 20 emails today saying, hey, we'd really like to talk to you about X. <laughs> How do you have a message that is going to resonate with people in these urgent situations? Yeah, so if you if you have done some uh, reconnaissance, if you will, if you have had your team go out and check in and see what kind of common needs there are, where how people are prioritizing, what's important to them right now, you can shape your messaging around that. So you can come back to them and say, hey, I've talked to five other companies that are really similar to you. Here's what they're struggling with, A, B, and C. Are you struggling with the same thing? Yeah, I am. Okay, I'm already sounding a little bit different than I was before. Well, here's some of the things that we're doing to address those specific needs. Can we get a call? Now, if you are being super relevant to something that's important to them right now, and that's a very different message than calling to check in or how's it going or whatever our, our old messaging was. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So. We might be looking at different people. We might have a different message. We may have something slightly different to offer. We may be just, just rediscovering what's going on in that company for priority. Those are all great things to ask our salespeople to do. Gary, how do we know if the salespeople are doing it, right? We kind of use that old phrase, you got to inspect what you expect. So what can we do as a sales leader to make sure people are doing this? Yeah, we have to be really clear on what our expectations are because we have talked to lots of salespeople and a lot of them want to do the right thing and they're not sure what that is. So they're, they're a little paralyzed right now. As a sales leader, we got to be super clear and, and I get down to who should we be calling? What is the messaging that, that we should be having or the questions we should be asking? Uh, when are we doing this? Uh, how many per day or week or whatever are we expecting? But let's get super clear on our expectations. In our next video, we'll talk about how to shape those behaviors and whatnot. But as a sales leader, we need to be super clear on what we're asking for so our team knows how to execute. Yeah, so, so a, little, a little cleverness, right? Don't, don't keep beating your head against that same wall and, and trying it, right? If, if it's not working, we're huge on how do you make an adjustment? And as the sales leader, you have to help them with what to adjust to, some clarity on what we're asking for, and let's try something different in this time because there is a fairly large part of the market that is doing well. How do we get to those people and how do we know? So um, hopefully that is helpful today. So as a sales leader, it's on you. This is where 
you got to step up and uh, give ver really clear direction. Uh, in our next video, we'll talk about now we've given that direction, how do we uh, shape that behavior and make sure they're doing the right things that we want them to. This is part of our Real Talk series. If you want more help, if you want to dig into what does this messaging look like, how do I figure out who to call on and whatnot, please go to our website, www.pivotaladvisors.com, or give us a call. We'd be happy to help out. Part of our Real Talk series, uh, check out our next one when we talk about shaping behaviors.